All right, it is Fan Fiction Friday. Let's see what you sickos came up with this week. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Friday, December 1st, 2023. This is Tony Gonzalez and Colby Vanhood for the Locked On Mariners podcast, which is brought to you today by FanDuel. Uh, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N to get yourself started. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. This is Fan Fiction Friday, the show where you send us your Mariners trade ideas and we grade them on the 20 to 80 scouting scale. 20 being the worst, 80 being the best. Let's get into them. We're going to start here with Max. Simple one for one deal with the Angels, Luis Ringifo for Jonathan Classe. Colby, how are you feeling about this one? Eh, whelmed. Um, it's fine. It's fine. But, you yeah. know, Ringifo is a. Uh, bit of a redundant piece in the infield uh he's not better than jp he's maybe better than urias but he's pretty close to rojas at the plate uh he's also a a pretty severe splits guy he definitely hits lefties a lot better than righties um you know he's got two years of club control he's not a good defender anywhere on the infield uh he doesn't draw a ton of walks but he will hit for you know pretty good average uh doesn't strike out a ton not a lot of pop but some like He's a, he's a nice player. He's a very valuable role player. Um, but you have that guy, like you have Dylan Moore who is actually good defensively at multiple spots, crushes lefties still, um, you know, and, and you have the everyday, you know, fill in or the everyday option cover two with Rojas and Urias. So, um, I don't think Ringifo makes a ton of sense for Seattle. Uh, and so when you're giving up a, a prospect with the upside of, um, with the upside of class a, it, it, it's probably not a good fit. Uh, I would say, but I think the valuation is, is pretty close. Um, you know, two years of a kind of a quality role player, uh, for class yeah. a, I, I think that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I like Ringifo, like just as a player in general, I don't think he's a particularly good fit for the Mariners. So, yeah. Uh, I'd say pr- this one's probably like a 45, like it, it's close, but I just don't think that the player actually fits with Seattle. Yeah. I'd say 45, 50. Um, it's good on the valuation standpoint for me. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't, I agree with you that he's, uh, he's not a great fit for where this roster currently is. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned about the bat cause like he has hit 33 home runs over the course of the last two years. Uh, 114 WRC plus this past year, but you look at his batted ball data, very well below average and hard hit rate, very well below average and and barrel percentage, things like that. Just don't know how repeatable that is offensively. And like you said, he's not a good defender, so he has to hit. And I just don't know if he's going to be able to hit enough. I don't know if that's going to be sustainable for him, what he's done over the last two years. Right. I mean, you also have to factor in what he's making in arbitration. Um, like how mm-hmm. much money do you want to spend at the second base position for three guys to try and share that? Next trade here from Jace. Athletics receive Cade Marlowe and Jonathan Classe. It's another Classe trade for Brent Rucker. Colby, you really like Brent Rucker, but I don't think this is enough for Brent Rucker. Yeah, tough to say. Uh Rucker, I think, has four years of club control left. It might be five. Um and obviously the the concern with Rooker is that he strikes out a lot, like a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, he's also a really bad defender in, in the outfield. He should be playing first base or DH. Uh, thankfully, you do have DH at-bats to give, and Rooker's power is totally legitimate. It, it would play at T-Mobile Park uh, just fine, despite being you know right-handed pull power. Um, he Post last year against lefties and righties, uh, again, he strikes out a lot, and that, that's kind of the concerning factor here, but... Um, I also, you, when you look at his, his savant page, like he doesn't chase a ton. So mostly he's swinging and missing at strikes. 
So that's a good sign. And it does seem to indicate that it's possible he can actually cut down his strikeout some. Uh, and if he could get down to 28% strikeout rate, then he's probably a, a 130 WRC plus bat. So um, would the A's be willing to trade that guy? Probably. They're probably willing to trade just about anybody on the roster. Is that enough? Those two guys, is, is that enough for you know five years of, of a 30 home run you know, right-handed hitter in this market? Probably not. I, 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 I would love for it to be, um, and I would do that deal, uh, pretty quickly, but I think it's going to cost a little bit more. I don't think it's going to cost you Ford or Emerson or it, it might cost you like Hancock and, uh, Marlo, something like that. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I think this is a little light from the Mariners end, but, uh, and obviously there are some concerns about Rooker's, uh, ability to make contact enough, but he right. crushed lefties last year, was very good against righties. He's an everyday bat. He has power like you like. Uh, he'll hit the ball hard, and I think there's a decent chance you can actually cut down on a strikeout rate because, again, it's not that he's chasing wildly. He's he's swinging yeah. at strikes. He's yeah. just swinging through them. Yeah, this is kind of the opposite for me of the the last deal that, that we just looked at where, for me, it's I like the player. I like the fit. Uh, just not sure about the valuation. I think you probably need a better piece than, than Marlo or Classe, whoever you think is a more valuable piece there i think it's class a i think it's really a toss-up with marlo specifically because we i see marlo a lot in these trade uh, ideas that we get um obviously had the the really nice cup of coffee with the mariners at least for the first couple of weeks that he was with the mariners but then he he got exposed he got exposed pretty bad after that point um and you can be sure that other teams saw that as well so i'm just i don't really know what the value of Cade marlo is He's probably more of a third piece in a trade. You also have to remember he's 26, 27 years old. So he's yeah, an older prospect. Yeah, because you could look at his at his year and say, well, there's the proof of concept. But you could also look at his year and go and, and look specifically at the last couple of weeks that he was with the team and go, that's that's probably the the Cade Marlowe that, that we're getting. That's probably who right. he actually is at the major league level. So I don't know. It could go either way, really. Sure. But I mean, like, honestly, if, if you're if you're a fan of Cade Marlowe and you're the the A's, you might just ask for Taylor Trammell instead. Uh, you know, like Trammell, Canzone, Marlowe. Yeah, they're all pretty interchangeable to me. All right. So we got more trades coming up here on Fan Fiction Friday. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Lockdown Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole lot more. And the Mariners might not be playing right now, but the Kraken and Seahawks are. So whether the action is on turf or on the ice, whether it's Jared McCann or Gino Smith, you can bet on it all with FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. And as a reminder, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. So before we get back into grading your Mariners trades, a few things here. First, Colby, let me know that we did not grade the last trade that we just talked about. Whoops. Uh, so what what are you feeling on the uh, the Brent Rucker trade from Jace? Mm, 40 to 45 probably closer to 45 yeah um, I'll, I'll i'll split the difference call it a 42 you're such a weasel yeah i know pick a side tie pick a side I'm, I'm i'm a fence straddler that's just who i am so a couple of things before we get into um into more of your trades uh the mariners have dfa'd well they did it a while ago but uh caleb Ort, 
and Cooper Hummel have been claimed off of waivers uh, mm-hmm. by uh, Hummel to the Mets and Ort to the Marlins. So the Mariners have two open spots on their 40-man roster all of a sudden. Um, that can be as simple as, you know, they're clearing way for the guy, whoever that may be, that they're going to select in the Rule 5 draft next week at the end of the winter meetings. And it could also be, you know, for the other spot, another waiver claim or a small free agent addition. So it might not mean a whole lot. Or it could mean that there's actually something cool about to happen. But either way, the, the Mariners are not doing that just for no reason. They're not just clearing space on, on their 40-man roster for the sake of it. So something is going to happen. I just I don't know if it's actually going to be anything noteworthy or not. So, Right. Uh, it's also uh, worth noting that it's probably not a waiver claim because there's no reason to DFA a guy uh, right. before you actually win the claim. Sure. Uh, yeah. So it, it's probably uh, either a trade or a free agent signing or, um, you know, just some light roster work. Uh, I yeah. don't think this this, you know, points to the Mariners acquiring Randy Rosarena and Josh Lau low. Like, I, I don't yeah. think it's something like that, but like maybe it's like, oh, yeah, they're they're, you know. They're signing this reliever to, you know. I don't know, Justin Topa or Brandon Hughes or like something like in that range. Uh, and then they're drafting a guy in the rule five, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. So, yeah, so definitely something is coming. Just don't know how big Mm -hmm. or small it's going to be. Uh, and then, uh, secondly, uh, some show news. Uh, we were thirdly, thirdly, thank you. Thirdly, some, some show news. Uh, we were alerted by locked on. Uh, this morning that we will be going to three shows a week uh, starting the week of December 11th uh, and through the early portion of February they didn't tell us exactly when but it's always whenever we've gone to three shows a week it's been around I think we pick back up and go to five shows a week around pitchers and catchers reporting so about two months for about the next two months we'll be uh, three shows a week we'll be posting our shows monday wednesday and friday on here and then we'll be switching up our patreon schedule to tuesday and thursday for those shows that we're just going to be recording once a day uh colby and i and uh you know that doesn't mean though that like hey if something happens on a tuesday if the mayors make a move on a tuesday we'll we'll do an emergency show on tuesday or even on the weekend so long as we have time to record so long as we're available to record we'll do an emergency episode as soon as we possibly can and when the mayors do something so don't worry about that uh but our regular uh posting schedule will be monday wednesday friday for about the next two months starting again on december 11th so all right let's get back into these trades tim has a uh, trade here with the rays uh, where the Mariners trade Bryce Miller, Gabriel Gonzalez, and Tyler Locklear to Tampa Bay for Isak Paredes. Talked a lot about Isak Paredes recently, Colby. Yeah. Okay. Not a huge fan. Yeah. Um, I like the player. I just don't like the fit uh, necessarily. Paredes is like amongst the most elite in the game at hitting fly balls, uh, particularly mm-hmm. to left field. Uh, that profile in and of itself doesn't typically lend itself well to uh, T-Mobile Park, particularly early in the year, and particularly if the the fly balls aren't hit routinely like hard. And Paredes's hard hit rate is not anything special. So um, he hits a lot of towering fly balls that he's relying on carry to to lead the ballpark, and it just doesn't happen in Seattle. Um, so I don't think he's actually a very good fit for the ballpark. Uh, could be wrong. Like I'm just guessing based on, you know, history, but yeah. maybe Paredes can break that trend. Um, as for, you know, I, I think, I think Miller and Gonzalez is a little bit of an overpay uh, for Paredes. Cause it is four years of Paredes for six years of, of Miller. Um, but overall, I think it's probably reasonably close. So yeah, but given everything that that we've talked about with Paredes and given both your concerns and my concerns about how that bat is going to translate to T-Mobile Park, I'm even hesitant to just give up Bryce Miller alone for Paredes. So, uh right, especially without, you know, Miller's replacement yeah. uh, in hand. Yeah. So, uh I think Gonzalez and Locklear is, you know, both of them is also too much uh on the back end, so Yeah. Uh 
it might be what it costs though. So I, I, I don't know if this is like yeah. a, a drastic overpay if, or if we're just not high enough on Paredes for this to make sense. Uh, yeah. So it might be a more of a Colby and Ty thing rather than an actual, like yeah. this is what major league teams are valuing sure. or how they're valuing Isak Paredes. So, mm-hmm. but I would say this, if, if like, this is what it cost for the Mariners to get Paredes, uh, I think they're out. Um, right. They might consider yeah. Miller. They might consider Miller and Gonzalez or Miller and Locklear, but all three, I don't think they're doing all that. Th- uh, all three without something else being pitched in by the, uh, by the Rays. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's Austin Shinton, maybe, but uh, right, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, for me, like if, if the race came to this, came to me with this, I would have very little interest in that. Um, but you know, in real life baseball, like real GMs, this might be about the cost for, you know, four years of a four win third baseman. So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll say 35, 40, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Cause when you're talking about a player that has had a lot of success at a less saturated position group than say like corner outfield, um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna cost you something, especially when they're when they have multiple years of club control when they're not making that much money. It's it's gonna cost you something pretty nice. Uh, it's just with Paredes in particular. I like the player. I just I don't know if I like the player in Seattle specifically. You know, like I, I think like if he stays in Tampa Bay, he'll have another really good season down there. I just is that going to be the case when he's playing half of his games at T-Mobile Park and when he's going to be playing in cold weather? In, at T-Mobile Park for the first month and a half or so. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I'll go 35-40. It's, it's a bit much for me personally. But yep. maybe the Mariners and maybe other major league teams feel differently. I don't know. Next trade here from Alex. Bryce Miller for Kerry Carpenter and Bo Brisky. Tigers. I have no idea. Who Bo Brisky is? Um, I think he pitched against the Mariners once. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like I've oh, watched him makes... pitch at least once. Okay, well then, obviously he probably pitched pretty well. Um, sure, sure. So uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, Kerry Carpenter, uh, yeah. a guy, if I'm remembering correctly, the Mariners did check in on at the deadline, uh, but Detroit wasn't willing to move him, at least not for prospects. Now, the other issue with this trade is that Detroit actually has pretty good pitching already. Uh, and they need bats. So, you know, Kerry Carpenter, they're probably more, uh, you know, they're probably valuing the bat more than the arm in this particular case. Uh, but, you know, the fact that Seattle did check in on Kerry Carpenter uh, this this summer, at least that was the rumor. Um, the fact that, you know, we saw Carpenter just destroy T-Mobile Park uh, in, in his one trip over here. Uh, pretty good bat at ball data for him this year. You know, not yeah. elite, but certainly a butt well above average in most areas. Um, yeah, that there's, I, I think the Mariners probably like Carpenter and I think they would probably like to acquire him, but there are some issues. He does strike out. He does not walk. Uh, defensively speaking, pretty fringe uh, in, in a corner outfield spot, uh, you know, at best fringe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good profile. Uh, again, he does chase, he does swing and miss. He doesn't draw a ton of walks. The K percentage is 25%. That's not high, but it's not good. So, um, I think in a vacuum, the Mariners probably like Kerry Carpenter quite a bit and they think he fits their ballpark really well. But when you expand it out to, you know, reality, uh, do the, do the Tigers need pitching? Specifically, do the Tigers need young, controllable pitching? I think they got that covered. Uh, so I think I think every team needs it, but for the Tigers in particular, do they want to trade one of the few, very, very few good bats that they have for it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that lineup needs a lot of work. Pitching's yeah, pretty much there. Yeah, because because they have Carpenter, they have Riley Green. Uh, Torkelson had a great second half, uh, but mm-hmm. after that, there. yeah, uh, it's it's bad. It's real bad. So, uh, yeah. It plus it's it's six years of Miller for five years of Carpenter. I don't think that there that's enough of a 
buffer there to get the Tigers interested in another, in another arm rather than a bat. So I would say that uh, I like this deal. It, it's fun. It, it's something we haven't talked about. It's a player we haven't talked about a lot. Yeah. But I don't think that it's realistic to expect the Tigers to trade probably their second best hitter for another young arm when they're pretty they're set up pretty well uh, in the rotation and and they pitched really well uh, in the second half of last year too. So I don't think I just don't think the two teams match up that well. But I do yeah. like the Kerry Carpenter call. That's a good one. So yeah, it, like if, this, if they made this deal, I, I would be pretty happy about that return. Yeah, for Bryce, one hundred percent. Yeah, this deal is probably like a thirty-five to forty, but with the uh, the added creativity, the fact that we're talking about someone that we haven't really talked about or have been asked about, uh, that definitely gets you some bo- uh, some bonus points. I just don't think it makes a ton of sense from the Tigers' perspective. But I'll give you like forty-five because it is creative. It is very interesting. It is a it is an interesting conversation to have. Sure. Um, I'd probably go, I'd probably go 50. I think you're on the right oh, track okay. with Carpenter. Yeah. Uh, like a player like Carpenter, who's put up a 120 WRC plus last year, who, you know, still isn't exactly proven like Miller, but is also kind of a proven concept like Miller. Sure. Like I, I think Carpenter yeah. and, and like Carrie or uh, yeah, Carpenter is kind of the Bryce Miller of, of offense. I think that's what you're looking for uh pretty close but i just don't think detroit and seattle are great fits but i'll give it a Agreed. 50 okay wow the the rare colby higher score than ty that's interesting can i interesting. say some of us are secret optimists some of us are ty <laughs> all right you're listening to the lockdown marius podcast thank you again for making us your first listen we got a few more uh, trades to go over here on fan fiction friday we got one here from udonis aslam my favorite miami heat player of all time obviously uh brian Wu for nico horner it's another one for one deal colby what do you think about brian Wu for nico horner the cubs second baseman a shortstop uh i don't think that happens no. um Horner's really good player and He's the Cubs, uh, the Cubs have, you know, decent pitching already and, and plenty of money to, to go and spend on it. So, and I mean, like if you are going to th- like do this with one of the Mariners young pitchers, it should be Miller. Right. I mean, kind of, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Maybe the Cubs like woo more, uh, but yeah, you're not getting Horner. Um, yeah. I think I've been told Horner's- that the Mariners, have like the Mariners like Horner and they've checked in with the Cubs a couple times yeah. on him, but he's just yeah. not available for anything that's reasonable. He's he's uh, he's also coming off of back to back four one seasons. He was almost a five one player this year. He plays up the middle. Like that's that's yeah. a that's a premium right there. Like I think you're probably if you're if you're gonna trade if the Cubs are gonna trade Horner, it's gonna be for like Logan Gilbert. And yeah if you're yeah. the Mariners, you're probably not doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that it's not, you know, pretty close to fair value, but you're probably banking on more ceiling that Gilbert hasn't shown yet. And you feel like you've seen Horner ceiling. We're also talking about a team right now that apparently is right in the mix for Shohei Otani. Like they're, yeah. they want to add to that core. They're not trading Nico Horner for Bryce Miller or Brian Wu, you know? So like, is there a way that the Mariners could get Nico Horner? Sure, but it's probably Logan Gilbert. Logan Gilbert's probably the key to the, to the yeah. key to that. And at that point, I'm personally probably out. Yeah, um, it, I think you would have had better luck if you went with like Christopher Morrell. But uh, sure, yeah, Horner is just that. That's shooting the moon. So yeah, so twenty five to thirty. You know, like. I'll I mean, go 35. It's, it's a non, you know, it's a non-starter for the Cubs, you know. I would imagine uh, so, yes. Yeah, so. But again, it's a player that we haven't talked a lot about, so 30. Sure. All right, all right. 30 for the bonus. And another rare high Colby score over Ty. That's, wow, What what's going well, on today? Well, uh, I even said, you know, when we restarted Fan Fiction Friday that I was going to try and be more, you know, optimistic and be, a, you know, a little bit more positive with the scores. But uh, clearly that has not been the case today. Uh, Daisy and the Dingo has a three team deal here with the Rays and the Braves. Randy Arozarena and Von Grissom to the M's. Brian Wu and Harry Ford to the Rays and Tyler Glassow to the Braves. Three team deals are hard. 
Uh, also, though, this doesn't need to be a three-team deal. Like, the Braves can just trade the Rays, Von Grissom for Glass now. Like, the Mariners okay. can just... the Mariner, Well, yeah, because, like, the Mariners could just trade Wu and, and Ford for a Rosarena. Like... Well, what I, I was think, thinking here was that because of the because of the state that the Braves farm system is is in right now, that they would like need Harry Ford. But so you that's like kind of how I view Arena straight up. It's like woo, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's see, this is why three team deals are super complicated. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. They are very hard to put together. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's weird that the Mariners, like, I, I don't understand this obsession with Vaughn Grissom and the Mariners. Like, yeah, he's he's a fine prospect, and, and obviously he's had some major league success, but, like, would I rather have Harry Ford or, or Vaughn Grissom? I'd rather have Harry Ford. It's not that close either. So um, I don't really get it. And, and you know, for the, the Rays, it's not bad return for glass now. It's actually a pretty good return for one year of glass now, but is it too good? Like it might be. And the Mariners don't even get glass now like Seattle giving up the two best young players in this deal. And, and eh, for Randy Rose, like if the Mariners traded woo and Harry Ford for Randy Rosarena tomorrow, I wouldn't like that all that much. Um, and Von Grissom to me doesn't tip the scale enough if, mm-hmm. if I'm Seattle. Uh, so I think the Rays, I think the Rays probably balk at this. I think, uh, I think the Mariners probably step back from this and the Braves are definitely willing to trade Vaughn Grissom for, for Tyler Glass now. Uh, but I think they're the only team that looks at this and says like, yep, we'll do that. So, right. Right. Yeah. The more teams you add, the more complicated it gets. So I don't know. It's like a 40. Like I think the, some some of the pieces are there, but overall, just like I don't see it. Daisy, you're a fan fiction Friday regular. I hold you to a higher standard. You have had much better three team deals than this one, so thirty five. I'm just leaning oh, into man. the bet now. I'm just gonna lean into the bet now. Why not? Ty Allison I'm... over here asked. He he's talking like he's Led Tasso. Right, Led <laughs> Led Tasso. All right, so uh, last trade here of the day from Buddy. Emerson Hancock and Jonathan Classe to the Nationals for Lane Thomas. So Lane Thomas is pretty overrated um, by Mariner fans, or really sure. by anybody. Yeah. Uh, he's only been an everyday player once in his entire career. It was this last year. He really slowed down in the second half. He wasn't, you know, all that great. Uh, posted below league average on base percentages. Uh, still, just very mediocre against right-handed pitching does most of his damage against left-handed pitching. He's only got two years of club control left. Uh, and if the reports we heard over the, uh, over the summer are true, the nationals, they, they want a lot for, for Thomas. So, um, yeah, one Oh nine WRC plus. That's I'd like to do better. I'd like to do better in right field, particularly for a guy again, who's only been an everyday quality hitter once in his entire career. Uh, Cause there's a very high chance that you're just getting a, a platoon guy, like a strict platoon guy uh, who's going to be fringe average defensively and, and, you know, 10% above league average. That's fine. But is that worth the number of prospects I have to give up to get him? up? You know, apparently based on what, how the nationals valued him this summer. no, that being said, I'm not that high on Hancock or Classe. So for me, fine. Like it's good enough. Uh, but I, I don't think that um, just in general, I don't really love the idea of Lane Thomas uh, based on what I think it's going to cost. If it costs this, fine. But yeah. I would really like Thomas to be like the third best player I bring in. And there's a pretty good chance that he wouldn't be. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, giving up 12 years of Class A and Hancock for two years of a guy who might be. I don't really care fam. about that. I, I don't really care about that aspect of it. If they got Lane Thomas for Emerson Hancock and Jonathan Class A, I'm more than fine with that. I just I don't think the Nationals are going to take that. I think the Nationals are going to overvalue uh, Lane Thomas. Uh, and um, yeah, I just I'm not willing to go beyond that point. Uh, I feel like obviously, I remember, 
like reading like on MLB trade rumors or something that like the nationals are likely to ask for like Brian Wu or, and at that yeah, point, at that, no, at that no. point, I'm, I'm so not even, far out. Hang yeah. up the phone. Not, not even close. Not. Yeah. Cause you know, right. I think, I think Thomas is a fine player. I, you know, I think he mm-hmm. would help, but I, there's a, there's a very He's... obvious limit to that. There's a very obvious, obvious cap to that. Um, sure. A lot like Tay Oscar, pretty yeah. similar. But Hancock um, and Classe would be more than fine for for me. I would be. I I wouldn't even really hesitate to do that. I'm, I'm I totally prefer fine with that. they threw in Kyle Finnegan or Hunter Harvey, but like fine, whatever. Uh, I just don't think the Nationals would do this though. I think they're going to yeah. overvalue uh, Thomas, and I also think that they, uh, you know, the the Nationals are a team that has spent money in the past uh, that is looking like it's closer to playoff contention again. Um, I don't, I don't know if they, if they necessarily want to subtract from their major league roster in that, that kind of fashion, but, uh, but we'll see. I'll go, right. I'll go 40. I'll go 40 on it. 45. I feel like the valuation is pretty, pretty close, but I don't think the nationals are going to be reasonable. And also I'm just not a huge, like I, I would, I would rather have Brent Rooker than, uh, Lane Thomas. And sure. I feel like if I threw that pull out there right now, uh, it would go the other direction. Right. If it was like, all right, so going back to the Brent Rooker trade real quick, if that was Hancock and Class A for Rooker, I think that that's a pretty good deal for the A's and for the Mariners um, yeah. instead of Marlowe and Class A. Um, so maybe we combine the two ideas here, right? <laughs> uh, the return in this Lane Thomas deal and then uh, the uh, the actual player that you're trading for in the, the Rooker deal. Um, also, in the middle of the show, we were supposed to ask the question of the day, but because I had like 5 million things that I had to mention, I forgot the question of the day, and I don't really have a question of the day off the top of my head. Colby, do you have a question of the day for the folks? I'm going to put the ball in your court. Uh, well, I can come up with one. So last night, or yesterday, uh, mm-hmm. we got our first snow of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still around. Uh, nice. I'd say about half an inch, but it you know snowed pretty steadily. Right on December 1st, too. That's, that's pretty sick. I mean... It snowed yesterday, so November 30, but whatever. Um, yeah. So I guess my question to you is that like what is your favorite like snow day activity? Like when you either now or when you were a kid. Because like for now, right now, it's if you're watching, it's probably like staying inside with like a warm drink and watching TV. But like, were you a snowball fight person, snowman, build a mm. snow fort? I was a snow fort person. So um yeah. So, like, what what do you like to do when it snows? Basically, uh, snowball some... fight, snow angels. Yeah. Are you a skier? Maybe. Like, is is that your thing? Let's know. Mm. What do you like to do when it starts to snow outside? What what is your your go to? Do you panic also, and think that the world's ending and fill up the bathtubs so that you have fresh water in the morning in case the pipes freeze? <laughs> Are you one of those people? So let us know. There, let us know. I, I I bet there's a couple of let those people down in the comments let below. Let us know. Huh? Huh? There, Pretty there close. You there, 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 Pretty you close. there you go. There you go. There you go. Baking cookies, hot chocolate, fire, 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 fire. Idea. You do the mini marshmallows in the hot chocolate. Uh, no, I like big. Okay. I like the regular size marshmallows. Regular size. So basically, what you do is you, you you just let the marshmallow absorb all the hot chocolate, then you eat the marshmallow. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, cool. Size doesn't matter, Colby. Moving on. <laughs> That's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Pat Node, I'm Titan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dan Gonzalez. It's D-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z. And Colby at CPAT11. That's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.